What a difference this year has made for Ukraine. Just last December, President Volodymyr Zelensky was warmly received in a rare joint session of Congress. Our two nations are allies in this battle. And next year will be a turning point. I know it, the point when Ukrainian courage and American resolve must guarantee the future of our common freedom, the freedom of people who stand for their values. But if this year has been a turning point, it is turning in the wrong direction. Here's President Zelensky at a press conference in Kyiv, sounding less than confident about continued American support. Talking about financial aid, we are working very hard on this, and I'm certain that the United States of America will not betray us, and that on which we agreed in the United States will be fulfilled completely. Why the change? Republican resistance to funding Ukraine has hardened from no blank checks to no checks at all. Congress has adjourned without passing critically needed funding for this battle for democracy. And in Europe, Hungary's Viktor Orban blocked $50 billion in EU aid. Now, military planners are considering the worst case scenario, that Ukraine, without Western aid, loses to Russia, perhaps even by this summer. My guest, Jens Stoltenberg, wrestles with all of this as NATO's Secretary General. And he tells me that support for Ukraine is, in fact, a vital investment for the United States in the face of Putin's direct threat to the democratic world. Secretary General, welcome to the program. Did you expect that by the end of this year, things would be so dire and maybe Putin will be proved right to have said that he can wait out the West? I'm always very careful predicting about uh, wars because wars are by nature unpredictable and uh, most experts uh, were very wrong at the beginning of the war because uh, then uh, uh, we feared and many experts believed that uh, Russia would uh, take control over Kiev within uh, uh, days and that Ukraine would collapse uh, within weeks. That didn't happen. The Ukrainians uh, uh, has been able to push back uh, the Russian invaders in the north, uh, in the east and in the uh, south. Uh, but of course now uh, we see that the front lines have not changed in any significant way over the last year. And therefore it's even more important that we uh, uh, very clearly uh, uh, continue to provide support to Ukraine because uh, uh, they need our support to be able to uh, prevail as a sovereign independent nation S in Europe. So what is your reaction then to the US Congress, you know, not voting on this package, to the EU not voting on this package, and to, you know, American policy, anyway, Western policymakers saying that Ukraine's going to lose if it doesn't get this aid. Do you share that concern that it will lose if it doesn't get the critical aid that it needs very soon? Of course, it would have been much better if uh, the US uh, Congress uh, could have decided on a new uh, package or a new allocation of money to, uh, to Ukraine uh, before Christmas. Uh, at the same time, I, I continue to count on uh, the United States and the US Congress to uh, agree uh, a substantial um, package for uh, Ukraine. Uh, because uh, this is ch not charity. This is not only something we do to uh, support Ukraine. We do it because it is an investment in our own security. Um, and uh, uh, we have to remember that if President Putin wins, it's not only a tragedy for the Ukrainians, it's also dangerous for us. We become more vulnerable because then the message to President Putin is that when he uses military force, he gets what he wants. And this is also very closely watched uh, in Beijing. Uh, uh, so this is in our security interest, in the security interest of the United States, uh, to invest uh, in uh, uh, the defense of Ukraine. So to that point, let me play something that President Zelensky said while he was, you know, trying to trying to persuade the West that they needed the aid. He 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 sort of said what you said. If you know, if if Ukraine loses, who knows what's going to happen next? If Russia will kill all of us. They will attack NATO countries and you will send your, your sons and daughters. And it will be, I'm sorry, but the price will be higher. 
So, and you said last week, and let me get this straight, if Putin wins in Ukraine, there is a real risk that his aggression will not end there. And, you know, President Biden has said something similar. P Putin says that's nonsense. But what do you say to, you know, to this fear that it won't stop in Ukraine? We don't see any imminent threat against any NATO uh, allied uh, country. Uh, but what we see is that if uh, Russia and President Putin wins in Ukraine, uh, then, of course, uh, we see a pattern. We have forces in Moldova, and Moldova, they invaded uh, uh, Georgia. We see the brutality of the Russian forces in Syria. And then they annexed Crimea in 2014. They went into Eastern Donbass in 2014. And then if they then are able also to take the rest of Ukraine, then, of course, the lesson for them is that they can violate international law, they can use military force, they can invade neighbors, and they uh, get what they want. Uh, and that's a very dangerous lesson. I've asked you many times, and I've asked many other leaders many times in the two years of this war, you know, why hasn't more that's been promised got to Ukraine in the right time, when it could have actually used it, when it could have actually taken advantage of its strength on the, on the ground? And there's a major new uh, article in Time magazine that is now asking the very same question. In fact, saying that President Biden's and the Biden administration's slow yes... Uh, and NATO's slow yes to Ukrainian requests for weapons systems, and especially ammunition, is, has, has led to this point where Russia has been able to capitalize and to dig in and, and this state of attrition right now. They invaded, uh, they, they, they used military force against a uh, neighbor which have in no way uh, been a threat to them. We can always discuss uh, um, if, if it was possible to do even more from our side earlier in providing support to, uh, to Ukraine. Uh, but what is clear is that the United States and uh, NATO allies have provided unprecedented uh, support to Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, with yes, light uh, weapons like the anti-tank weapons, the javelins, and and uh, and all the types of anti-tank weapons that, that made a huge difference the first weeks. Uh, then with heavy artillery, uh, then with advanced air defense systems, uh, and uh, now also with cruise uh, missiles, long-range cruise missiles. And uh, we have started the training of F-16 pilots, and F-16 planes will soon be delivered. So this is the reason why, actually, the Ukrainians have achieved a lot. They have been able to liberate 50% of the territory yeah, yeah. that uh, but, the Russians occupied at the beginning of the war. But nothing, nothing in the last year. And, and I guess my question is, what is your, what is your plan B? Well, the plan is to continue to support Ukraine, uh, because we know that the only way to end this war um, uh, in a way that ensures that Ukraine prevails uh, is that we uh, convince President Putin that he will not win on the battlefield. And the only way of uh, convincing him uh, is to ensure that uh, Ukraine has the weapons, has the ammunition, has the forces they need uh, to continue to push back uh, Russian forces. And yes, you are, you are right that the, 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 the front lines have not changed significantly over the last year, but, you, but Ukrainians have been able to inflict heavy losses uh, on the Russian forces. So the Russia is paying a price on the battlefield, uh, and they have been able to take control over parts of the uh, the Black Sea and push back the, uh, the Black Sea uh, Russian uh, Navy, so they are now yep. able to export uh, goods and grain uh, out of uh, uh, Sevastopol uh, and out of Ukraine. So next year is going to be really challenging then. Jens Stoltenberg, thank you so much for joining us.